Breaking news on ESPN. The Indiana Pacers fired coach Nate McMillan on Wednesday. Today, less than three weeks after announcing he would keep the job for two more years, team officials made the announcement 48 hours after the Pacers suffered their second straight first-round sweep. McMillan went 183 and 136 in four seasons with the Pacers going to the playoffs each season. Stephen A., your take on this. Initially, meaning a few minutes ago when we heard this news, Max and Molly, I was stunned uh, because mm -hmm. just literally two weeks ago they gave him a contract extension. And then I looked it up again, and it was one year. And that put me in my NBA hat on. There have been many occasions throughout NBA history where you're giving a one-year extension. So when you're pushed out the door, you at least are guaranteed some of that money, if not all of it, for that additional year to provide you a cushion so you're taken care of even though you might be out of a job. You feel what I'm saying? And so what happened is, is that when we look at Nate McMillan, everybody knows that um, I, 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 I scream and holler, I go to hell off about the paucity of opportunities for African Americans, particularly on the executive level uh, in the NBA where Masai Ujiri uh, is African. He's black, but he calls his own shots. All the black folks that you see in executive positions in the NBA, I'm meaning GM, basketball operations, that kind of stuff, they don't, they don't get final say on these matters in a lot of situations, whereas Masai Ujiri does. So it's one of nine. Uh, and that needed to be addressed. And obviously the number of black coaches that used to exist, that number has dissipated as well. I've even got on NBA players for not speaking up more about that. But in this case with Nate McMillan, I must say, although I think that he's a quality dude, I think he's a damn good head coach, I think that he's done a good job in Indy, I cannot blame Kevin Pritchard and the Indiana Pacers for firing him. And the reason why is because even though he's taken them to the playoffs all four years he's been coach, Max, he's been bounced out in the first round every year. With the exception of 2017, 2018, if I recall correctly, when he and Victor Oladipo and those boys took LeBron James to a game seven, the other three years, including the last two, he has been swept. First year, swept by LeBron. Last year, swept by Boston, even though it was without Victor Oladipo, who had that nasty injury. And then, of course, he's back, but they get swept by Miami. And so, as a result, in the 16 games, you in the 16 postseason games that you've played, you've lost 13. That gives an organization the right to say, we respect you, we love you, we believe that you can be a head coach in this game, but we feel the need, based on this trend, that we need to go in a different direction. I cannot fault Kevin Pritchard and the Indiana Pacers for making this move. It, it, as much as I respect Nate McMillan and as much as I believe he deserves to be a head coach in the NBA, I cannot blame the Pacers for feeling we need to move in a different direction. Well, Pritchard's a hell of a GM, and... McMillan's a hell of a coach, and I can fault uh, the Pacers for this, for this move, Stephen A. First of all, the Pacers really don't have, like, a transformational talent on the team. Oladipo's the closest thing to it, the closest thing to the best player on a championship team that they have, and he's not quite that, but he's the closest thing to it. He's a fair approximation of it, and he's clearly not 100%. And then they don't have Sabonis. Right. And so, of course, they're not going to beat this Heat team, this Pat Riley-led, you know, a Spolstra-coached organization where you have Jimmy Butler and, like, we can go on and name all the players, the shooters, the defenders. The only thing they don't really have is size. But, I, but you know, like, of course, and they're, of course they're not going to beat a LeBron James-led team, um, especially with Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love. Like, they're not that good. And as good a job as, as the GM yeah. has done, he hasn't put together really a championship roster. Nate McMillan's one of the best coaches in the NBA, in my view. I think this has a lot to do with D'Antoni. You've brought it up. Hey, Fertitta's got to see D'Antoni really do something or he could be made available. And they're saying, oh, one year, this lines up. We're going to be in a position to make a run at D'Antoni, who they must feel is a better coach than Nate mm -hmm. McMillan. But uh, otherwise, I don't know why. By the way, there's going to be a hell of a coach in McMillan available for a team well, who needs one. But, Max, you got to remember, it would be one thing if they're saying he's a bad coach, we don't want him. Sometimes it's about we need another voice. 
we shouldn't be getting swept. We might have lost in the first round, but getting swept sends a different kind of message, particularly when it's three times in the four years. We all know that Nate McMillan could coach, and we know there's a plethora of coach of, of jobs that he would be more than qualified for, particularly if he potentially was in a bigger market, if he had access to even more marquee players. But based on what you're seeing with him, it's, I think it's perfectly reasonable for Kevin Pritchard to say, listen, you might be better off somewhere else, but in this particular situation, we simply may have run our course and Stephen need a. to move in a different direction. I can respect mm -hmm. that. Every year, every year you and I bring up his name in terms of coaches of the year. He, he may not ever win it, but like, yes. like be our number one we pick. Do. But he's always met honorable yeah. mention, coach of the Next year every year. Like, I like to see him in a coach. different situation. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.